All right, good evening everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting and our final council meeting for the year, December 19th, 2022, 6.30 p.m. Good evening, council, administrators, and uh, everyone in the audience this evening. Uh, Ms. Burner, if you'd call roll, please. Yep, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman here. Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Rogold. Here. Seven members present. Yeah, thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trustee. Well, Lord, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the, of another year for our city, Lord. And we pray that you be in this meeting, that thy perfect will be done. Bless all of our first responders, our troops overseas and at home and our, their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. the of the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty, moving on to, uh, we need action on the uh, regular minutes for the uh, December 5th meeting. So moved. Second. Any uh, discussion with council? Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Minutes accepted 7 0. Thank you. And then we'll need to uh, do the minutes for the special meeting on December 8th. So moved. Second. Any discussion, council? I'm ready, Ms. Berger. All right, Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Minutes accepted 7 0. Right, thank you very much. And moving on to communications. Uh, DR Horton is here tonight. Um, they don't really have anything per se, but if you were to have any questions, this would be the time to do so. Council have anything from the last meeting that they didn't get into? So, I don't think we have anything. Do have one question? Sir? Did you get an email to the city manager on my questions two weeks ago? Or last week? Whatever it was. Installation? Uh, That's, yeah. I wrote, I apologize. I would get that information for you. It's not really a standard question. That will, <laughs> so. that will uh, certainly come up when we actually have going to prove that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just curious what our factory is using. And there was another, oh, the windows, I think. There's what quality or grade of windows? Are they construction grade or are they above construction grade? Anything else, Mr. Lindsay? Oh, that's the two questions. Thank you, sir. I asked last time. All right, anyone else? You don't see an email come through, so. Oh, not a very standard. Said, yes, I was hoping you said yes, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, you guys are, if you so wish, you're welcome to sit through the rest of our meeting. If not, you know, feel free to leave whenever you guys would like. We appreciate you guys coming, just in case anyone had any questions this evening. Did you have anything for Mr. Birch? No, no, I talked to him a lot. Okay. Very good guys. All right, thank you. All righty, moving on. City Manager's Report. Mr. Bridge, back to you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Lowry, uh, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we would share with you the city manager report and we'll start under uh, uh, department reports with our Clark County Sheriff's Department, Deputy Major Sachs. Sorry, I'm trying to find my spot. Uh, thank you, uh, Randy, members of council, members of the administration, general public. Uh, our report for this month of November, the uh, deputies took a total of 148 calls for service they had 29 assists. Uh, we had 33 reports, 44 traffic stops, 12 citations issued out of that 44, 32 warnings issued, uh, 14 arrests, and we had 397 uh, building checks for that month. And that will conclude the report. Council, any questions for Deputy Major Sack this evening? All right, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate the forward as always. 
Thank you, Deputy Major Sackett. Moving on with the city manager report under Fire Man S, uh, Fire Chief, Chief Trustee. Council, citizens, for the month of November, this uh, New Claw Fire Division responded to 111 EMS calls in the city, 12 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to nine fire-related calls in the city and two in Elizabeth Township. We had three calls answered by mutual aid, either by Pike Township or, or Bethel Park, due to and Medic 52 being on a response. We answered two mutual uh, mutual aid EMS calls for Pike Township, and we answered five uh, mutual aid calls for Bethel Park. Uh, two good notes: uh, Firefighter Timmy Reed passed his paramedic class with a 95% average, and Firefighter Kevin Stevens passed his EMT class with a 94% average. Any questions for Fire Chief tonight? Mr. Lesman? Those are impressive scores. Congratulations. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Chief. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on with the city manager report, our finance report with Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, <coughs> Council, and members of the public. The finance report is for the month of November. Our uh, revenue that we collected during November was $598,280.39. Our expenditures for the month of November were $784,179.35. And we have one more month for the end of the, uh, our fiscal year. We are on target, should have been about 92% for our revenue, and we have exceeded it. We're at 127%. And our target of the 92% spent for our expenditures, we are averaging at 85%, so we're a little below our estimated expenses and higher on our revenues. So that was a positive. On our income tax collection for the month of November, we brought in $167,814.43. And for the year in total, we are 8.81% above what we collected this time last year. On our mayor's court revenue report, we have collected for the month of November $1,746 in fines and court costs, which brings the total for the uh, year to date. We started in June at $9,560 in collected revenue. Um, as for the expenditures, I, I know one of the council members was interested in that. On my expense report, it's listed under the um, mayor's expenses, but for the year to date, we have spent $13,527. So we are um, $3,900 in the, in the uh, red, but it's slowly catching up. And that is my overview for the finance report for the month of November. I'd be glad to entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Ms. Harris? Mm -hmm. Thank you. The, the uh, mayor's court expenses, a lot of that is taken up by set up fees, right? Absolutely. In the beginning, we had the fees before we even collected revenue, just to get mm -hmm. the building set up and the supplies that they needed. So it's, um, so taking those out, it's been pretty good. Yes. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Anyone else? No, you accept the finance report. Second. Any discussion before we vote? When you're ready. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That's accepted 7 0. Move to accept the mayor's court report. Second. And sorry, any discussion, right. Council? Go ahead when you're ready. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That's it. Also accepted 7 0. Thank you very much. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving on with the city manager report. Our uh, service uh, service report reported, reported by our uh, service director assistant city manager, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, leaf collection is complete, and crews went out today to do the, to verify all piles and pick up anything that was loose. 
So basically after today, this date of the 19th of December, uh, there may not be any more leaves placed at the curb. Um, if they are, we'll probably have code enforcement come out. Uh, they can be put in your trash for anything left, but we did, uh, the guys did a excellent job of getting leaves picked up this year. And again, they must be disposed of by other means. We're uh, prepared for winter de-icing operations. Our trucks are up and running. And um, as you can see, we did have to salt with a little bit of dusting we had the other night. Both of the LED blinking speed limit signs have been installed, the 25 mile an hour on Main Street and the 35 mile an hour just out here by the entrance of Smith Park on 571. And then uh, under Public Works is discussion for the painting of the Quonset Hut. This was discussed at our budget work session and we had put a placeholder in there just till I could get some information back from a uh, company who goes out and does bidding. There's some information attached underneath my report uh, with three companies who have responded with some pricing for uh, uh, labor and materials. Uh, one of them was Maxim at 37350 Cotterman and company come in at 39970 even though you'll see there's a zero missing, but it's definitely not $39. And then the last one was Tecta America, which came in at uh, 59847 I believe it was a $25,000 placeholder. I had talked to Mr. Bridge and um, I just wanted to do a little discussion on that um, before we would move on with the rest of my report. Council, have anything to say on those quotes or subject matter? First off, thanks for getting those, Mr. Kitka. I appreciate it. Um, I just, you know, I know that we, I, I think I'm the one that originally brought this up, you know, with us working hard to get Utah cleaned up in general, you know, throughout the city. I, you know, I think that we need to also set an example from a city standpoint. Um, you know, and I know it's, I know what the building's used for. It's, it's hard to make something look pretty that gets used and abused the way it does for salt and, and uh, heavy equipment, things of that nature. I just, I would like the, I like the idea of just, you know, make it, try to make it look as best as possible, just, you know, as a good, rep, you know, a good representation of the city itself. So. That's all I had to say. Sir. Mr. Kicker, do you think the thirty-seven three fifty is in a fair price to, to have everything done? I'm not an expert in it, but the guy who uh, did it, he ballparked it off the top of his head to be rate just under forty. So I'm going to guess that yes. Everybody else was higher. So I mean, well, one so the one company, some companies, this is in their wheelhouse. So it depends on what they're doing. If they're doing other things, this might be. Um, with the other two companies that are very close, uh, they tend to uh, possibly do this type of work on an arch building. Safety, the type of material to be used on it, falls in their wheelhouse a little bit more. So that's why you'll see two close together and the other one that is not. Okay, thank you. Is there, I'm sitting here looking at this again, I just to make sure I didn't. Um, there's, for example, we'll just go with the first company. Um, if we were to if we were to go with something like this, is there any kind of uh, warranty on the the paint as far as how long it'll protect before it was to rust through or anything like that? Um, so the primer um, is is to hold and keep it. It's like a rust conversion. They're saying up to ten years. You okay. might be able to get something. You know, and the warranty degrades over time. So at ten years, if you get some issues, you're not getting full replacement of it. What, if, you, if we went with this, what kind of color would you personally like to see on it as the sort of, I mean, what do you think would be best? I mean, a darker color, a lighter color? No, it, it'd probably be something that reflects definitely the sun. So you're going to be in that gray. You don't, you're not going to be white. It's going to be too bright. So right. probably in that gray. It'd keep it with being an old Ponson hut. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kit, or I mean, Mr. Bridge, is this, we didn't put anything in the budget for this, did we? 25, 25, 25 so, 20. yeah. Okay. 20? 20. Oh, so 20. So we'll have to, I'm sure you don't pay for it. You signed the agreement, so I'm sure it won't be billed till after uh, the first of the year. Okay. Because um, if, if Howie decides to go with the lowest bid, which is 37350, it says it's subject to acceptance by December 31. So we can either call and get an extension on that after the first of the year. But what I'm saying that is we'll have time to reallocate money throughout the year. Probably we'll have some time to move some funds around. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Lindsay. So, Mr. Bridge, we do have the funds to do this? 
the extra funds on top of the, I mean, above the 25 that we earmarked? We earmarked 20. Oh, 20. So we'll have okay. to reappropriate. But okay. what I'm saying is Basically, since the 23 another, budget's already done, well, Colleen will have time throughout the year okay. to do it. Otherwise, if you're trying to do this this year, then yeah, she's going to have to do a bunch of, we don't have any time. Okay. Yeah. So what she can do, I'm not speaking for her. She can pull money from elsewhere and do legislation to cover it in 2023 versus trying to get it all through now. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying, the problem is, is they need commitment by the 31st. So. Well, even if we sign on it, we're probably not going to get billed to after the after 23. And if you're looking at the price itself by 31st, we would probably just look at a letter of intent. If we know we have a good, that is not a uh, concrete, we can back out. Okay. That's just a letter of intent so they can go ahead and put their uh, hold on materials at that price. They just will not ship. Okay. And then when I give them the PO number, then that is the official and agreement. Bam, they're they're ready to move. Okay. And it's a payment will be made in full upon completion. So if you look at that bottom box, they won't even do it. So we no, signed we'll there. Yeah. So if we, yeah, so he'll sign it before the end of the year, but it work went up in 2023 and we pay when work is done. So plenty of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Mm -hmm. Cook. Before we spend this kind of money on that building, that building has been around here almost as long as I have. Do we need to look at our plans down in the future and see about replacing that building before we invest this kind of money? I have already looked at some pole buildings that we were possibly placing at the wastewater plant that may have to change a little bit because of a possible plant expansion down the road and where we might fit this. But we were right around 250 to 275, which eventually will come into play to have a new building for storage of wastewater, street department, that whole nine yards. But a building that's easily uh, 80 feet wide to 120 feet, um, maybe 200 feet long to where you can store bigger piece of uh, equipment, it's, it, we've been seeing 250, 275 easy. Because commercial pricing obviously is a lot more in residential. And on top of that too, I think the long-term goal is to get it out of the park. In so. your estimation, how much longer have we gotten that building? Structure of the building is, is, in, is in great shape. The beams and everything, actually the metal's in decent shape. The only part that's not in great shape is about the bottom two inches around the uh, grade. Um, so it, I'm not an engineer by any means, but it's by looking at it, it is not rusting, it's not falling down or anything like that. So we, it, it could hang around a while uh, until we get something new. How long? I mean, most of the guys I've had in there, they, they don't have like a, a gas when they uh, walk in and say this thing's coming down in a year or two. Good. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All right, thank you, Mr. Kickoff. Thanks for the uh, information and the work put into it. Let's see. All right, moving down to the water department, uh, we're still working on our private wells. Uh, well four pitless adapter got delayed on us, so uh, we're still coordinating with the well company and a contractor to uh, do that. So we'll be carrying that work out into 2023. And then we have five hydrants in stock that we'll be starting to replace now that one, we had a back truck um, we've been doing a lot of work too. And one, it was gone for almost five months of this whole year with it, waiting on an engine. So we do have a lot of catch up there. Um, I will be sending Mr. Bridge uh, some information on this past uh, solid issue that we had. We have worked with a couple different companies. We have found some uh, minor things that we're uh, to take care of. And then we've also learned some things that uh, these companies do with trying to help us save on salt, different types of um, uh, procedures that we can use so there'll be something coming out that we'll have a little more detailed information of kind of what we're working on if anybody ever asks questions or uh, that type of thing under the sewer department we did receive all our bids and uh, we utilize choice one for uh, administering all, all the uh, engineering for that project uh, Peterson construction did come in to be the lowest I just received the uh, award recommendation uh, this evening and you will have an ordinance in front of you at the first meeting in January, January 3rd, for introduction. It will not be an emergency. Uh, so then it is approved the second meeting of January, and then will be effective February 1, and then we'll sign agreements at that time to move on. With that, we had bid out um, for $435,000 worth of work for the two clarifiers. They came in at uh, 
385,000. Um, so there was also an alternate uh, in, in the state of Ohio and most other places when you bid, you just can't direct select or bid just one item. So you have to provide an option for an alternate. So we also asked for an alternate to uh, review after bids. Those alt that alternate did come in uh, $50,000 less. However, it is um, a completely different company. Similar equipment, but not the same. However, I'm going to recommend to council that you approve the standard bid because what we currently have with our other primary and uh, secondary is Clearstream, and we would like to keep those Clearstream to be able to have only one off O and M manual, and uh, just keep things basic. So just knowing that's coming to you, I will be drafting a an email or a letter to go out to Mr. Bridge um, that will be with the ordinance. So hopefully it clarifies anything um, with the bidding process and why I would recommend um, you know spending the extra money to stick with all the same manufacturer for our equipment. So that'll be coming down um, as soon as I had stated, and then. Um, I'm getting ready to work with the county on some uh, projects for, for this year with the uh, street resurfacing. And then, um, let's see, get ahead of myself. Everything for Clark County Phase 1 um, upgrade project with the CDBG basketball <coughs> court that'll be coming out this spring with the documents and everything. The county kind of leads that. I'm basically the inspector, and then uh, we, we give our share of funding. And the natural gas generator has been installed at the city building. It has been tested. It is tested every Monday at 1130 for five minutes. Uh, we will put it on a monthly test to actually shut the building down and run it for a certain time. Um, that, that'll be coming up. So everything except for we did find a bad battery backup when we tested it. So now we've already got an order in today to get those. So power goes out. The battery holds your system up for those few minutes until the generator kicks on with like less than a minute. So that was uh, running good, and that is all I have for my report. I can entertain any questions on it or anything else. Sorry, but it's kind of long-winded. That's all right. Council, any questions for Mr. Kitko this evening? Oh. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Kitko, on the Kwanzaa hut, is that a done deal? On, uh, as in, like the- Getting it painted or whatever you're To doing. get it painted? No, it is not a done deal. Okay. This was a discussion brought up the work session on whether, mm -hmm. you know, because um, the agreement is over, thir is 37? Yeah, we're up to yeah, 35. 37. 35, so we will have to bring legislation mm -hmm. to council. Um, okay. for, I, was, I was thinking that, but yeah. I didn't want you to clarify it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. <clears throat> I had just one, Mr. Kicker. It wasn't on the report, but just kind of, for future thinking, I was wanting to know if you'd had any info on this. So uh, with the streets, and I think you guys have done a phenomenal job with getting streets. I mean, we all know there's streets that still need a lot of attention. But as far as your work with grants and, and, and squeezing every nickel you can into getting streets done, I think you've done a good job. Um, with, with the 235 slash Main Street getting done this coming this coming year in 23, uh, any thoughts or projections on our plan of attack for uh, church since it's you know kind of one of our probably second heavy, most heavily traveled roads uh church can get milled and filled but that's a the problem we have with that is our utility under there has some issues as you can see by the the lines we cut in for service lines mm -hmm. um we are somewhere around replacing utilities new curb and gutter um mill and fill in what what asphalt is left adding storm because there's only a couple storm basins along there we're somewhere around three million and it is a federally registered uh, roadway for us, so we can apply through the tip. It's the matching funds that are so hard to come up with three million, and, and I think 20% of that is. It's, it's a very big project. I can get some funding through OPWC. I can get funding through tip if if approved. Problem is, we have to be uh, I don't want to call it solvent enough to be able to have our own pot when I apply for OPWC and I apply for tip. Those are usually four years out, so you have to be ready in four years to fund your share for OPWC, your share for TIP, and then have the rest covered. So it's a it's a big project where the urban repaving that ODOT's doing is 20%, and we already receive funds um, in the state highway that we just save a portion of that every year, and in 15 years, I know I got my 20%. So are you talking utilities, are you talking about replacing all the water under Water line, water services, yeah, they're galvanized, we got lead goosenecks, um, it's, it's all that stuff. So that's why you see so many cuts in it. So it, from end to end, it'll be replumbed. It, it would have all new utilities, yes. Water line, water services, yes. 
Can you clarify, like, and the end, you say just from Lake to city building yeah, area? From, from lake, lake to Maine. To, yeah. Lake to Maine. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, the other issue with that, too, is the EPA is considering yeah, a rule perfect. change for we're been, we didn't get we didn't get a grant to help replace some of our lead goosenecks um, we do not have an issue with lead but they're requiring you to get those out and part of that was to help remove some of that lead okay. out of there well it may come down the line to where if a homeowner has galvanized and because you had a lead gooseneck on that line that if the homeowner can't afford it you as a city may have to front that money and pay for that uh, removal so we're careful on how, how we're going to proceed with some projects because some of that may be where we might be covering city portion and the homeowners portion as well. Okay. It's not official yet, but it's it's leaning that way. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Lindsay. The on what you were just talking about for the homeowners, then would they have to pay the city back? That's up in the air right now. Well, okay. The federal EPA has been the, the they've been running with this lead abatement thing, and Ohio's usually Ohio and California are usually the two stricter states that follow lead, and it's just been it's, it's not saying it's unfunded at this point, but it could very well be. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Mr. Kitko, for the report. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kitko. And moving on to city manager report under informational items, we got some discussion topics to go through. So at the last regular meeting, I was out with COVID. Still kind of catching up from that week, so I'll have some additional stuff to council next council meeting. One of the things that come up that was kind of easy to, to take care of was the ordinance that you guys let die for lack of motion. And that was ordinance 22-59, placement of trash cans. I just brought it here today, just to let you guys know, probably after the first year, we can kind of sit down at the regular meeting and talk about that, so I can get some guidance about how you guys want to change it. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, it is written the way it is because it would be a lot easier to put something through municipal court if we have a mayor's court if we need to do that i know there's some discussion about it being as long as it's in the front yard against the house that would be okay well that kind of defeats the purpose of doing legislation to begin with because um, that way it's hard for the code guy to go out and say oh well you know yours is as long as it's against the house is okay but if it's in the middle of the driveway it's not mm -hmm. like that's just weird so most cities have the, re the have reclamation to the side of behind the house. So people have landscaping on either side. Most people just put a little thing there, a privacy, little privacy fence to screen it. Um, so before we make any other changes to it, definitely want to sit down with council. But there is a reason, specific reason why it was ordered the way it is. Um, but again, I just wanted to bring this to you guys so you can start thinking about it. And one of the uh, meetings in January, we can revisit this particular legislation piece. Uh, it is something that need, does need to be done. Um, how you guys want it to handle, it's your decision. But we just need some further guidance. Yes, sir. Sure. Um, Habitat for Humanity, uh, they were scheduled to have a presentation here January 17th. So some things have changed. We're going to hold off on that presentation. They're actually going to partner with the Clark County Land Bank. We're going to bring some information to you for a bigger project. Um, so they want to do a joint presentation to council. We have not set that time and date yet. Once we have that time and date set, we'll definitely pass it along to council. And I think you guys are going to really like what we're going to bring. Um, 2021 financial audits. So after many, many extensions, not on our part, um, this, uh, it, is a, it has been finalized. It is in the state review. So the state reviews all audits. Since our audit was not done by the state of Ohio, it was done by a private company, they need to review those results. Once the state reviews that, then we can release as a public information. Um, but it is done. I know Ms. Harris is happy about that. Uh, we did do better than last year, so we are excited to share that with council. And we always have decent audits, so to go anywhere up, that is even better. And that's off to Ms. Harris down here. A new fire engine. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped one. Floodplain at the D. Horde Residential Development Site. I shot you guys an email over the weekend on that. Just a reminder, when we before we pass this ordinance tonight, there's going to be an amendment. And it's going to uh, say contingent of, of approval shall be uh, the developer successfully completing the letter of map revision process with FEMA in the attainment of a floodplain approval from the city of New Carlisle. That is a recommendation from Burgess and our attorney as well. A new fire engine uh, that was graciously passed by council. We did execute that uh, agreement. Um, so that was um, sent to them, I think, a couple weeks ago. Uh, total contract price was 633000 So we're excited to get that ball rolling. Uh, Clark County Combined Health District Community Leaders Update. That is attached. Take a look at it. There's information on the measles outbreak that happened in Clark County recently, as long as COVID community spread and information about um, at home COVID tests they're giving away for free. 
So city administration building update, we had to close because COVID went through the city building pretty hard. We're still battling it out with some staff being gone. I'm sorry, staff came back full strength this week. Um, however, we're still kind of ins and out. So I am going to keep that lobby closed until after the first of the year. We open back up for the two year January 3rd. Um, we're now working great through the drop box. So I think a lot of people were just conditioned with that from when we did actually have to close for COVID. So that's working out great. Just to protect the staff a little bit better from keeping those germs coming in, we are going to keep it closed so we all can get 100% healthy. Um, also effective January 3rd, 2023. Uh, this will lead to better customer service, um, but we are going to close that down every day from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. for staff lunches. And that way everyone can go at once and then come back. So what we find happening is right now we have staggered lunches and we'll only have one person in there sometimes. And sometimes that line backs up. So going off of just some trends that maybe some other county offices do, we're just going to close for an hour so everyone can leave, come back, and have a full force. Um, the last thing on my report is the 2022 employee Christmas party. Thank you for the council members who did attend. That was uh, that Vice Mayor Grimm, Councilman Lindsay, and Councilwoman Eagleston. It was a great time. The food was fantastic. We had it catered in. Uh, the staff enjoyed the prizes, so it was one of the better ones throughout the years. Uh, we look forward to doing another one next year. That's all the information we have for the city manager report. We'll be happy to entertain any questions. Mm -hmm. Questions for Mr. Bridge this evening. Mr. Bond has one. Mr. Bond, just one. On the uh, change in the lunch hour or mm -hmm. whatever, is that, <clears throat> I'm just curious how you came up with that hour. Is that one that you guys saw as a slow time for people coming to the building or? I just didn't know if there's a lot of people that came during their lunch to conduct business. Mm -hmm. That was the primary time that mm -hmm. was dead anyway, and so it worked out or how you came to that. Sure. So I will, Ms. Harrison had a poll to her staff. We take staggered lunches between 11.30 to 12.30, so I think it was a combination of the time that we were gone. I do not see a lot of people coming in between 12 and 1. We have a lot of people that work out of town, to be honest with you. We got, I think... I'm not, I wasn't there for that, so if you want to add on to that, I don't want to put you on the spot. No, Basically, it, that's what it was, right? And we were looking for a common time, and it seemed like the research that we did, a lot of the places that do close for lunches are at 12 to 1. So our staff's here from 7 in the morning till 4, and it was right in the middle. Okay. That was just the, 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 <laughs> the easy the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure we weren't, you know, sure. we were still there to serve our people. And the, the foyer will still be open, so if someone needs to make a payment, they can still use the drop box and all that stuff. So, okay. yeah. Very good. If we do notice a, a change, believe me, we can adjust those hours. So at the end of the day, we're here for customer service. So if we see it's an issue, we can, I can get with Ms. Harris and maybe go 1230 to 130 or take a back half hour. Um, but right now, we're going to see how it runs. Perfect. You got to try something. Got to try it, for sure. And thank you for understanding. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Bond. Anyone else? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bird. We appreciate it, sir. Mm -hmm. Great, great report. All right, uh, comment, uh, comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please go to the podium, your name and address, and try to keep it to five minutes, please. All right, moving on. Um, Ms. Perno, I'll head over to you to resolutions. I have resolution 2022-17, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution declaring it necessary to renew an existing three mil tax levy for the operation of the New Carlisle Fire EMS Department and requesting the Clark County Auditor to certify the total current tax valuation of the city and the dollar amount of revenue that would be generated by the renewal levy. No move. Second. Yeah. Is that Bill and Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Uh, explanation of this resolution. Uh, so we need to renew, and it is renewed, so no additional money, uh, our fire levy and our health levy. So this is always a two legislation cycle. So what this resolution is going to do is direct the uh, county auditor to supply the city with what they call a certificate evaluation. And it says, based on our current property tax rate, these 3.0 mills for the fire levy or the 1.0 mill for the health levy will generate X amount of dollars. Once we get back that back from them, and they have to give that to us within 10 days of me dropping this off at state code. Once we have that valuation back, then we do a, a, a ordinance to actually put it on the ballot. So the ordinance introduced will be the first meeting in January, and they'll vote on that at the second meeting in January. 
So this is the first of two legislation processes. Thank you for that, sir. Mm -hmm. Council, any questions, comments, feedback? All right, when you're ready, Ms. Barner. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That's accepted 7 0. Have resolution 2022-18R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution declaring it necessary to renew an existing one mill tax levy for the public health purposes and requesting the Clark County Auditor to certify the total current tax valuation of the city and the dollar amount of revenue that would be generated by the renewal levy. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Raybaugh. Okay. And an explanation of this resolution, this basically mirrors the explanation I gave for the other resolution, but this one has specifically to do with our health levy. This is a 1.0 mil opposed to the 3 mil for the fire levy. Council, any discussion? And that money goes to the health department, right? It's a wash for us, yes. And that provides stuff for like community health checks, um, senior stuff, uh, baby stuff, all kinds of stuff. But we get more than benefits than we put into it. Oh, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else? When you're ready, Ms. Okay. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rogold? Yes. Okay. We have Ordinance 2022-63. This was introduced on December 5th, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the Clark County Sheriff's Office for fire and EMS dispatching services. Uh, this is a uh, explanation of this ordinance. This is a yearly housekeeping ordinance we do. Uh, we contract out with the Sheriff's Office uh, for certain services. One of those is fire and EMS dispatching services. Since this contract exceeds my monetary authority to spend for the year, we have to have the contract authorized in the council. Council, any discussion on that? When you're ready, please. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rogold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 7 0. Moving on to Ordinance 2022-65, right? Come on. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Introduced on December 8, 22, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance rezoning approximately 150.275 acres at Dayton Lakeview Road in New Carlisle, Ohio, from A, Agricultural District, to R, PUD, Planned Unit Development District, and approving a preliminary planned unit development plan. And I believe this is the one that has the amendment mm -hmm. yes would you like me to read it for the record again please so the amendment shall read contingents of appro approval shall be the developer successfully completing a letter of map revision process with fema and the attainment of a flood plan approval from the city of new carlisle second any discussion council all right when you're ready all right councilman roadwald yes Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Passes 7 0. Happy? Extremely. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I am thrilled. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> One more to go. <clears throat> Where are we at? 66. 66. Ordinance 2022 66 introduced on December 8th, 22. Public hearing and action tonight. <coughs> an ordinance regarding the arrangement for provision of improvements for an RPUD planned unit development district. So moved. Second. An explanation of this ordinance. Certain sections of our code require 1278.12, .12, to be honest, uh, to be exact. Uh, requires that um, that once the plan unit development is created, that we are to arrange provisions for bonds from the developer. So just so we know, and it's for the record, 
It is still too early for them to do that. So we did the legislation to put it in writing that it will happen. But we need to do that later on in the staging when they actually know how much it's going to cost when they do final engineering. Um, but it is noted in our uh, ordinances that we do legislation measures, and that's what we have in front of us tonight. Right, Council, any questions for that or feedback? Right. When you're ready, Ms. Barner. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 7 0. We have ordinance 2022-67E, introduction public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending the city of New Carlisle's estimated resources available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2022 hey, and declaring tomorrow. an yes. emergency. Thank you. No move. I, I was just trying to second. <laughs> second by Mr. Roadwall. Uh, explanation of this emergency ordinance. We know council like doing, doesn't like doing emergency ordinances, but sometimes they are necessary. Emergency ordinance just means there's no effective period. It just comes effective immediately. We'll see a lot of these towards the end of the year, especially with financial documents, and that's what we're doing right now. So this particular uh, ordinance, this um, basically states that when we opened our budget, we didn't have, uh, we have more money than what we have, so we have to match the auditor's books. So this will make sure that the city and the auditor match. Council, any questions or comments? When you're ready, Ms. Berner. Okay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Oh, that's an emergency ordinance. So I'm not crazy about them. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. That passes 7-0. Ordinance 2022-68E, Introduction Public Hearing in Action Tonight, an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2021-44 and declaring an emergency. So moved. Second. An explanation of this ordinance, this is another housekeeping ordinance that we do. Again, we do have to reduce appropriations when we don't match up. So this is, we are spending 15878 less in the pool fund than we were originally planned to. Did I say that correctly? There you go. All right, Council, any questions for Mr. Bridge on that one? When you're ready, ma'am. All right, Councilman Lindsay. <clears throat> mm, yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 7-0. Would you like me to read other business? Oh, Arbor Homes Residential Development and City Council Timeline. Arbor Homes Residential Development Public Hearing and Legislation Introductions will be on January 3rd, 23. Action on legislative items will be on January 17th, 23. There will be a TIF presentation at the City Council meeting on January 3rd, 2023 at 6 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Um, that will be before the start of our regular session at 6.30. City offices will be closed Friday, December 23rd and Monday, December 26th to observe uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And any additional city business is open for discussion. Thank you, Council. Any other business this evening? I just wanted to uh, say thank you to uh, Mr. Bridge, the administrators, Fire Chief, really all the any and all city employees that are related to City of New Carlisle Council. Uh, it's been a long, very busy year. I think you guys have all done a great job, uh, all the way down the line, and including Council. We it's been a, it's been one of the busiest years uh, that I've ever been on Council. So it's I'm sure like for Mr. Bond and some of the newer Council members, it's been pretty hectic. But uh, it's been uh, it's been an adventure, and uh, hopefully to end up being a positive one. Uh, the whole city will you know grow and, and benefit from all the work that's been put in uh, and also just a uh, very merry and safe Christmas to everyone uh, throughout the community and the city workers council and so on and that's all I have yes, sir. to the administration mr. bridge mr. Kitko miss Harris mrs. Harris sorry <laughs> uh, mrs. burner our chief the two deputies uh, 
you've done an awesome job this year, especially the city manager. He has only had two emergency ordinances, I remember. <laughs> uh, maybe more, who knows. Uh, I want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas, safe holiday. Same to the citizens here tonight, citizens out there in uh, TV land and to council. Uh, I have to uh, agree with the Mr. Mayor. It has been a busy year for us. Uh, the, uh, I think we've all gotten along pretty well. It hasn't been no fights, this fights or anything like that. Uh, no arguments to really speak of. I mean, we've had some disagreements. We're going to disagree. Uh, we're not all going to agree on everything all the time. If we did, you all out there should be questioning what we're doing. Uh, we, uh, but to finish it off, the Christmas party that the staff put on, I'm sure most of the ladies did the work. Uh, I was shaking his head. It was awesome. The dinner was great. The, uh, the games you guys was playing was different. <laughs> <laughs> it's chaotic, but it was fun. <laughs> it was different. Yeah, it was chaos. And uh, I just wish all of you a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Come back safe in 23, along with the uh, public and council. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? This has been a trying year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The administration's worked overtime. It's enough to make you want to pull your hair out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gave it off. You guys, you guys have done well. The administration has done well. The citizens, I'm proud of the way you've handled this. We've had disagreements over some of the uh, uh, developments, but you, everybody's handled themselves well. Just shows we can always disagree and we, and we can still be friends. Mm -hmm. And to the rest of the council, thank you for working so well together. Everybody a very merry Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Well said, sir. Anyone else? All right. Anything else? No, again, I, I, we, yeah, we're awesome. I'm Motion by Ms. Eggleston, You're second by Mr. Lindsay. Okay. No surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Rodold. I'm not sure yes. that. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Motion to adjourn accepted 7 0. And I believe Eggleston and I.